What is going on, comic fans? Welcome back to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and I'm here today with my top picks for this coming week's new comic book day. That'll be April 10th, 2024. If you want to see what's on the list, don't go anywhere. Let's get into it. Huge shout out to Big Time Collectibles. Check them out at their website. Follow them on social media. Do not miss out on the fantastic stuff they got going on. Con season's around the corner. You know they're going to be dropping the heat. And if you need anything cleaner press, Justin over on Instagram has got you covered. Links in the description. Let them know you found them via the channel. And as always, a huge shout out to my LCS, Augusta Book Exchange. They're linked in the channel to their Facebook group. Fantastic shop. They do uh, online ordering if you need to get books or if you're getting into tabletop gaming. Fantastic shop. The best in the biz. So let's get into it. This is my top picks for this coming week's new comic book day. After last week's extreme banger with ghost machine dropping i don't know where we're going to go from there i will remind everybody and encourage everybody to go to your shops if you didn't pick up the ghost machine release books three brand new issue number ones i covered them last week refresher here geiger number one is now an ongoing brand new rook exodus with jason fabak on the book and a brand new finally it's here red coat number one all three written by jeff johns we have brian hitch on red coat with him Gary Frank on Geiger. The whole Ghost Machine thing was such a fantastic launch. That is pure quality comics. Do not miss out on this. This is Image 2.0, but moving right along. April 10th is here. Let's check out what books have made it to my top picks. These are in no specific order, but right now we got Action Comics issue number 1064. House of Brainiac is upon us. This is really like part of the countdown to absolute power. We know that Brainiac is here. He brought his army of Zarnians. That's the race that Lobo is. Uh, we saw that it's kind of been building up. He's been moving across the cosmos with them, but they're making it to Earth. And what is it that they're here for? It's solicited as Brainiac is not here to bottle Metropolis. What is his actual intentions? kal is going to have to find out along with the Super Family. I can't wait to see where this goes. Ultimately, we know that a character called Queen Brainiac has to be introduced along the way. If she's not somewhere hidden on Earth, and that is his purpose for coming here now, she's headlining Absolute Power alongside uh, Failsafe and Amanda Waller. I'm really excited about this one. It's going to start in Action Comics, move to Superman, back to Action Comics. So you do want to make sure both of those are on your pool list for this event. It's going to be dope. It's going to be really good. Next up, coming in at number two, this is a brand new era already for the Energon universe. This universe has kicked off. It has been stellar. They have stuck the landing with every title they've dropped from Transformers to Duke to Cobra Commander. Now we're getting the first real shakeup. Daniel Warren Johnson has written and illustrated every issue of Transformers up until now. He is doing the art on the cover of this, and he is writing it still. He's not doing the interior art anymore. Jorge Corona has switched over to our uh, interior artist, from here, I don't know how many issue Jorge is going to do. If it's for the long haul, if it's just for six, if we'll change it up again. But the art does look good. It is a good fit. It's a smooth transition. And I'm excited to see where it goes from here. If I had to take Daniel Warren Johnson on the art or the story, I'm going to take him on the story 10 out of 10 times. I absolutely love his art, but I believe in him so much as a storyteller. He's never let us down. So I'm very happy that he's still bringing that, knowing how big of a fan he is of Transformers 2. He's the guy for the job. We've wrapped up volume or the first arc. Now in the second arc, it looks like uh, there's some uh, rumblings going on with the Decepticons. Soundwave and Starscream are battling for power while the Autobots are kind of reorganizing, realizing they have more allies out there than they knew. This really a, a starting point for a second arc. We'll see where it goes. I'm excited to see how it plays out. I've been loving this from issue number one. I've really been hyped about Transformers stuff anew ever since the uh, the Beast uh, the Beast Wars movie came out. It was, it was super cool. Rise of the Beast. Really enjoyed that. Third one on the list this week is Green Lantern number 10 by Jeremy Adams. How Jordan has discovered the last known power battery was hidden inside the green on Earth. One of the avatars of the green of the parliament took him down and uh, not only showed him the true power battery and why Earth is so important to the Guardians itself, but also gave him a real ring. He's no longer manifesting his own ring. He has a, a, a solid, tangible ring that's charged on an actual power battery. He's now able with a fully charged ring to escape Earth and go investigate what's happening. And his first stop is none other than the planet Oa, with the Guardians gone and the United Planets uh, ruling things. We know he's going into a trap or at least into hostile territory. It's going to be exciting to see how this goes. The tagline on this is how Jordan fugitive. We know the United Planets are after him. We know that they are manipulating 
the entire light spectrum and their appointed ring slingers are able to shift between the light spectrum with one color. Jeremy Adams is bringing so many elements into this that were introduced by Jeff Johns in the iconic run that he did. So Green Lantern is back, how Jordan is back. The core is, is, is all starting to form again, especially in the back pages of these. We get a backup story this week with start of the three issue Guy Gardner. And this is going to be a Guy Gardner Lobo story on top of that for the wrestling twist. If you read Jeremy Adams' Flash run, you know he does have a knack for throwing some wrestling content in there. And it's actually really fun, entertaining, funny, and pretty solid. He introduced a really cool character. I highly suggest checking out what's happening in the Green Lantern comics. Even the John Stewart War Journal comic by Philip Kennedy Johnson is fantastic right now. Next up on the list, Suicide Squad Dream Team touched on Absolute Power, which is DC's summer blockbuster event for this year. This is the first one with the actual tagline across the top. You can see the banner countdown to Absolute Power. Dream Team is a four-issue miniseries where Amanda Waller has put together the most hodgepodge team we've seen in a while of Suicide Squad members. But it gets the name Dream Team because the character Dreamer, who first appeared on the Flash CW television show, made her way into comics, and now she is being used as a teleporter on this team of villains. She's able to not just go to sleep and travel through other people's dreams. She's brought the whole team with them as they invade the island nation of Gamora to shut down the operations of whatever they have going on. We know it's a lie. Amanda Waller's in there for other motives, other reasons. And in this issue specifically, it looks like Dreamer has found a way to escape the grasps of Amanda Waller. She found a way to get the bomb out of her head is what I'm assuming that means. Has something to do, I'm sure, with shifting into the dream world and back. But uh, who's coming with her? We're going to find out in this issue. Uh, the first issue was really fun. Bizarro's on the team. Total wild card. Went on a war path immediately in Gamora. We'll see how that plays out. I'm really excited to see how this builds up and ties to Absolute Power. I hope we get more of these countdown books. It reminds me of the Infinite Crisis days. It's the way to do it. Next up on the list, Power, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, The Return, written by Amy Jo Johnson. Total love letter to her time, her lifetime as a ranger. So, so emotional. Hits every beat. Uh, you, there's no previous back reading you need for this. This is issue number three. If you watch the series at all, if you're familiar with the series, if you're familiar with some of the real life events that have happened with these people, it really makes us hit in a different way. It is so freaking good. In this book, Trini had a, lot, a very successful life, became the mayor of Angel Grove, and she has passed on. Uh, Zach is known to be the Black Ranger and uses his celebrity status. Billy is like a tech guru, and Kimberly just wants to be left alone. Ever since losing Tommy in a battle, uh, she just kind of just isolates and almost like she's a little depressed. It looked like the daughter of Trini came to visit her at the end of issue one. Big reveal. It was a villain in issue two and came for her power coin and got it. Judging from this cover with the pink and green and the dragon coin on there, I think Kimberly might be finding a secondary source of power and going after it. I cannot wait to see how this plays out. Jason is still out there, fully activated as a Red Ranger, but no one knows where he is, including us as the readers. And not after the little opening to the series, but man, I've been loving this. This has been so good. So freaking good. Number next, The Batman First Night by Dan Jurgens. Perkins on the art, Spice on the colors. They always tag team together. This right here, this black label title right here. Wow. Absolute wow. No clue how many issues it's going to be, but this is issue number two. The whole premise of this is we're going back to early 1930s Batman. Like the early stuff, early, early, telling a story of monsters and men, of, of mystery, of murder, and trying to get to the bottom of it. Gotham elites are getting targeted. Batman had to save the mayor. It looks like dead people are being reanimated somehow and coming after them. At the end of the last issue, Batman tried to stop an execution at the jail, thinking that that is the source of these reanimated corpses. They're executing people, and then they're bringing them back. Who's up to it? Who's doing it? No clue yet. Yo, it is so cool how grounded this is in the time era it's set. From Batman's original suit design with the purple gloves to him not having a Batmobile, but using standard cars, hiding them around town, folding a suit up and putting it in the trunk. This hit on so many levels. I know this is an oversized book. I know these magazine formats are not an easy sell for a lot of folks, but let me remind you, they make bags and boards for them. They make boxes for them, just like your regular comics. Even if you just buy it, read it, and give it to a friend. 
do yourself a favor, check this book out. That's going to be it for my top picks this week. Some solid stuff, not as much as normal. I'm glad for that. It's the uh, the Augusta Nationals Golf Tournament, the Masters this week here in Augusta. I'm slammed, so uh, might get a little reprieve. Might have some time to catch up on reading from last week and get into those. But I appreciate everybody watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're looking forward to. Be sure to check out the merch store down below, too. We've got some new shirt designs and stuff in there, some cool stuff. Consider joining the channel membership. It's a lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff there. And at least hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.